Are you a podcaster looking to implement a content creation strategy for your Instagram page? Well, in this episode, I'll be walking you through the strategy I'm using to grow my Instagram to also help me grow my podcast as well. Hey everyone, welcome to Impact Podcaster Academy. My name is Alec Kasson and I help <clears throat> pardon me, I help podcasters create more impact and income with their podcast without needing to rely on sponsors or going viral. So when it comes to like, quote unquote, winning the game, uh, that is Instagram, uh, it simply consists of finding what the platform likes, and then leaning into that. It's kind of like if Instagram is pro- like preferring reels, you know, Instagram reels, then if you want to grow your Instagram and grow your audience, then you should really lean into creating more reels. But there is one thing in particular that will make or break the success that you see when it comes to building a community online. And I've kind of already spoiled it right there, but that thing is community. You really gotta be focusing on building a community. Community will be the foundation that you build everything off of, and it's really what influences your decision when growing your influence online. So. In the first section of the book that I wrote called Growing and Monetizing Your Podcast with Instagram, I really dive deep into the various concepts of building a community around your podcast and how you can confidently lead that community as well. And then in the second section of that book, I provided various formulas that are easy to follow. You kind of just plug in the numbers that you want, and it'll allow you to plan out the metrics that you need to hit in order to reach uh, the targets that you defined in that section. So. Why am I mentioning this? Well, if you don't have those foundations in place, then it doesn't really matter about the content that you post. So I just wanted to preface this episode by sharing that because if you haven't downloaded the book from the Impact Podcaster Academy private Facebook group and you haven't completed the first and second sections um, of that book, then like the information that you're gonna learn right now, it won't be as effective. It's still gonna be really good stuff, but when you pair it with all the things that you find in the book in the in the first and second part of it, it's really gonna take what you learn here and just make it excel. Cool, so now I really wanna start explaining my strategy for how I both plan and post content on my Instagram page to help grow my audience on there as well as grow my audience uh, on my podcast. So the first step when it comes to creating content online is to first define, you gotta define the market that you're speaking to. So it's not not the niche, you know, I'm not talking about the niche, not, not yet, but right now it's about defining just like the general market. You know, will it be health and wellness? Is it gonna be relationship oriented? You know, it could be intimate relationships, it could be platonic, familial, familial <laughs> relationships, um, or is the market that you're gonna be speaking to, is it gonna be more business or like leadership finance related? For my brand, I focus way more on the kind of like the business side of things. So my marketing and my messages will mainly be focusing on helping get people results in the area of, of business essentially, you know, looking at one's podcast as like a business. So after defining the general market that you're gonna be speaking to with your podcast, with your content on Instagram, then you can begin to niche that down. So it starts with the market and then you can niche it down from there. So for me, it's helping podcasters get results in improving the impact that they can have with their show while also allowing them to increase the amount of income that they can make as well. So now that you know kind of like the general market and that you've now that you've niched down that market that you're making the content for, you got to ask yourself, like, why is this important? Well, knowing your market and knowing your audience, it's like the difference between like the more you're able to narrow down on who you're speaking to and why, it's like the difference between going to the store and buying just a generic Hallmark birthday card versus actually like sitting down and like writing a letter to the person whose birthday it is and you're describing like all the amazing things they've done and how they've impacted your life and just the amazing things you're looking forward to seeing them do in the future. You know, you got the generic happy birthday and it's got like a dog on it, which isn't bad. I like those cards, they're very funny. But like getting a letter from someone that's like really deeply describing how they feel about you, all of the things that they're that they're proud of, it's like you know that's it's like night and day. So when you deeply know who it is that you're creating something for, you can create something way more powerful. And when you don't know who you're creating for, then you're you know you're basically just sticking with something generic. So 
birthday card from a grocery store, it's not going to evoke strong emotions. But a love letter that you write, that's something that certainly will. And uh, you know, the same is true for our content. We need to know who we are making content for because it'll evoke those strong emotions and it'll increase the connection that this person's going to have with you after they view it, which is also going to greatly increase the chance that they'll decide to follow you and your content and then maybe eventually like purchase something from you down the road. But how do you know what content to make? Well, this is where some research comes into play. Now, don't worry, you know, it's nothing strenuous. And honestly, uh, what I'm about to show you can help you create literally an entire month's worth of content in about like two or three hours of, of planning. So like, and if you think about it, it's like, oh man, hours, I gotta spend hours on this. But like really like three hours of doing this planning, you can have 30 days worth of content that you don't need to worry about doing down the road. And in my opinion, I don't know, that's like a good three hours well spent. Plus, you just take, you go like day 29 when you're about to run out of content, boom. Just, you know, three hours, bam, and now you got another 30 days. Or in the middle of that 30 days, you take three hours, boom, and now you are now you got 45 days of content planned out because you've kind of stacked on top what you've previously had planned. So anyway, uh, the first step to plan your content requires you to study other professional profiles who are in your market. It could be Instagram accounts uh, for conferences, for example, that you know people in your market go to. It could be Instagram accounts for coaches or consultants that speak to your market. Um, even celebrities, you know, I don't condone follow like following the methods of celebrities that much because they could do anything they want and they'll still get a lot of likes. They'll still be a, a lot of follows. They've already surpa surpassed that point of needing to try to grow. So if you emulate what they do, it might just work for them because they already have a big following. I just wanted to you know, warn you on that. So you're gonna pull up the accounts of all these different brands. You're gonna study what style of posts that they're making. Um, you know, Are they talking about specific topics? Do they make posts that show themselves a lot or is it mainly like infographics? So for example, I pulled up the account for um, PodFest Expo. You know, They hold these conferences for podcasters and what I saw is that they have um, a section in their story highlights that's labeled podcast tips. So for some reason, you know, that kind of spoke to me and I really liked that idea of having like short posts that talk about podcasting tips. And I saw on another account that uh, they have like motivational quotes and on your account, here's like a cool little hack. If you use motivational quotes and you have an image of a celebrity on there, it can really increase the engagement that people are going to have on that post because they see that they see that celebrity and then they see that celebrity associated with your brand and it kind of creates that like little connection there and then plus if they just see that celebrity like people post photos of elon musk and you know him talking about why you don't got to go to school or something like that and everyone loves it because it's a photo of elon musk or whatever <laughs> so um, another thing that you know when i was doing my research that i noticed was that a lot of public figures um in the podcasting space, they share a lot of their own testimonies a lot. And that's something I was like, oh man, I can incorporate that too because you know this journey of podcasting can really feel lonely at times. And you know I don't want others to think that they're going through these challenges or frustrations alone. So now, you know that was just kind of for me getting the ball rolling for ideas. Uh, if you're feeling stuck, um, just keep looking up different profiles. So for me, um, I just wanted to get like a baseline of what others were doing in my industry to get kind of like the creative juices flowing. Other topics um, that I realized, you know, things that I could talk about included like marketing because marketing is really crucial for podcasting as well as business structure tips. Uh, we may not think of a podcast like a business, but it really is like a business. So, you know, sure, we're, str we're striving to create an, an impact in the lives of our listeners by creating this community around our show, but when it comes to the growth and sustainability of our work, that's essentially what you know business structures are for. So at this point, all the research that I've done, for example, I know my market is business. I know my sub-market is podcast. It's going to be talking about growth and monetization and podcasting tips. Uh, the topics that I will cover in my Instagram page posts include podcasting tips, motivational quotes, personal life, marketing tips, proper podcast slash business structure, things like that. And when you have your own topics written, which could be like five or even seven different topics, that's kind of like the aim that you want to have for. You want to have like five or seven different topics that you can 
talk about in each of your posts. So each post would be one, would speak to one of those topics. And when you have five or seven, then comes the time where you can actually draft out the content. So you're not necessarily going to be creating the actual post, but you should just come up with ideas for what you could create content on for that topic. And the goal is going to be to come up with like 30 pieces of content total. So that could be, let's say you have five topics. You could do six posts per topic. You could do 10 posts for one topic and then just spread out whatever's left for all the other topics. But at the end of the day, you know, the goal is to have simply 30 pieces of content ideas for each topic. And then last but not least, after you have those 30 pieces, you can begin to create the actual post. So this means taking the photos, it means creating the infographics, it means recording the video. And if you actually want some templates for some Instagram posts that you could use, I've actually created uh, 42 templates that you can just purchase, download, plug in your information and you're good to go. Even when it comes to coming up with like topic ideas, I have 101. So like when you buy the 42 Instagram templates, you'll also get an entire worksheet of 101 different topic title ideas. These two, they're very plug and play. You read the title and it kind of creates this inspiration of like what topic you could put in there. And it can also help you very, very quickly figure out what posts you can make your content on. Because I always believe, you know, you should really start with a title first, very catchy title, and then create your content around that title. Because the title brings people in. If you've got a crappy title, people aren't going to even come, gonna come listen to the content. But if you've got a really good title and you got really good content to back it up, People are going to come in, they're going to listen, and then they're going to stay. Um, so yeah, just wanted to plug that in there. If you want to learn more information about that, you can click on the, uh, the website link in the description, join the private Facebook group, all that information will be right there. So if you're looking for a way to make that process easier of creating the content, then I highly recommend looking up those post templates. So once you've done all those previous steps, you know, being able to use this plug and play template, you know, removes a lot of the headaches that you might encounter when creating the content. Um, then what you're essentially left with is 30 pieces of content. If you were to post five times a day, not, not five times a day, five times a week, that's over a month's worth of content right there. And I'm telling you, all it takes is following this process that I literally just laid out for you. You might need to re-listen to this um, and follow it step by step. But once you do that, boom, in like as little as three hours, you got 30 days of content. So not only will you be able to create your content quickly, but you'll also be able to grow your Instagram and your podcast at the same time. So those are my tips. Those, that's the strategy I'm using. And when you do it right, you can really create a lot of amazing posts that can draw people in and get people to want to follow you as well. So Anyway, thank you so much for listening. I just wanted to share basically what I was doing a bit behind the scenes. I hope this will be able to help inspire you and guide you on your own journey of growing your own podcast using Instagram. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next episode.